I met up with an old friend, Joe Milano, owner of the Union Oyster House, who is also a past captain commanding, as they say, of the fabled Ancient and Honorable Artillery Company. While you may know where to find America's oldest restaurant, odds are you haven't been to where Joe is taking us. That's a secret little. Well, to welcome <laughs> to the home of the Ancient and Honorable Artillery Company. This is one this impressive. This is the man. The curator, Chuck, Chuck Fazio. Just what is the Ancient and Honorable Artillery Company? It happens to be the oldest chartered military organization in North America, the third oldest in the world. Formed by Governor Winthrop in 1638 to train local militia, its role today is largely ceremonial. The company originally wanted people that were interested in learning the military skills, yeah. but they were workmen during the day. If you knew how to fix a, a wagon wheel, you could fix a cannon wheel. They wanted you. If you were a man who handled horses and that type of equipment, they wanted you. This great hall served as an armory. Today it houses a collection of uniforms and other military artifacts with more encased in an adjacent museum. At the top of these symbolic 13 steps, a meeting room designed by Charles Bullfinch. What kind of reactions do you get when first-time visitors walk in here? you get the wow factor, you know. Now, I might be up on a ladder fixing something, or I might be plastering something that fell down, or, and I, can I help you? They think at first, well, they are talking to the janitor. Of all the artifacts. Chuck Fazio has had a passion for this place since he discovered it in high school. His mission today, to keep the history alive. Is this endlessly fascinating yeah. for you? Chuck? Oh yeah, every day is a new day. Uh, besides the fact that you don't know what's going to break, because we're talking <laughs> walls and paintings now that are well over 100 years old. And even older, such as this waistcoat that belonged to revolutionary hero, Dr. Joseph Warren. Killed at the Battle of Bunker Hill, right? And that was his, he wore that. Yep. It remained in the family, and they picked the armory to put it in. Is this one of your, your, one of your prized possessions? That's one of the prized possessions, obviously, because it's a, it's a piece of uh, clothing that was actually made for a guy who everybody knows mm. in history. Where to find all this history? A, the Old South Meeting House, B, Faneuil Hall, or C, the Old State House. You're on the fourth floor of Faneuil Hall. You're in the ancestral home of the Ancient and Honorable Artillery, which has occupied this building since 1746. Chuck, how many people over the course of a year would you say find their way up here? People who come into this building see the first floor, and a very minuscule amount of them will ever realize that there's a museum on the top floor. Amid the commotion of a busy medical complex is this place of respite a sundial that honors the nursing profession. People often have lunch sitting at the sundial. People meet at the sundial. It was Diane Smith's idea to put a sculpture here as a gift from the Nurses Alumni Association. Smith is a graduate of the hospital's one-time nursing school. I had received a book about public art in Boston. There was another institution that had a nursing sculpture. And I thought, oh, we need to do that. Not so simple. It was a five-year journey from idea to unveiling with a sculptor who took a scholarly approach, says nursing administrator Marianne Ditto Massey. So we set up opportunities for the artists to shadow nurses, to find out more about the operations. And that is when the idea of a nursing sundial was born. It represents the 24-7 of nurses and the diameter is seven feet for seven days of nurses working. Nurses are portrayed by Greek goddesses, past, present, and future. Holding a lamp is Florence Nightingale, the founder of modern nursing. There is a book to signify the continuation of learning and a globe to denote the universality of nursing. They grow in size, which really kind of represents the growth of the profession and the strength of the profession over the years. There are two quotes. One is from Florence Nightingale 
nursing is the finest of the fine arts, and the other is from a nursing pioneer. There's more and more to do for care and cure. As for the actual sundial? The artist worked with a person who is a sundial expert. Who knew that there were sundial experts? And so it does predict the correct hour and time. Here embedded in bronze, a clue. This nursing cap is unique to this institution. It was forever falling off my head. The quiz here is in two parts. First, where are we? A, Massachusetts General Hospital, B, Children's Hospital, or C, Brigham and Women's Hospital. We're at the Massachusetts General Hospital on the Bullfinch Lawn. And who is the artist? A, Ralph Helmick, B, Nancy Shern, or C, Penelope Jenks. Nancy Shern. I called her up randomly and said, would you be interested in doing a nursing sculpture at Mass General? And she said, oh, I love nurses, and the rest is history. <laughs>